So guys, a new version of Atlas OS is finally here. In this video, we're going to be checking it out. If you don't know what Atlas OS is, it's a version of Windows 10 designed for gamers. It reduces system latency, input lag and performance, and it runs really well on low-end PCs and even gaming PCs. It's an open source project and it's a really good version of Windows. I have done videos of the old versions before and they've been very popular on my channel. So in this video, we're going to be checking out the new update and seeing if it's any good. So to get Atlas OS, we need to go to their website. And as you can see, my video is actually featured on their homepage. So cheers, guys. Thanks for that. So yeah, we can see a little bit more about it here. Reduced processes, open source, privacy focused. And yeah, it just shows you all of the features and stuff here, which is really good. So if we go ahead and go to downloads here, there's two versions of Atlas OS that we can get. So there's a Windows 10 version and a Windows 11 version. Now the time of recording, the Windows 11 version isn't out right now. So we're going to go ahead and get the Windows 10 version. So yeah, to install Atlas OS, it's a little bit complicated this time. So we've got two buttons here, Atlas Playbook and AME Wizard. So what we need to do is we need to download both of these files and then just drag both of these to your desktop. Yes, Windows security, always good. Goodbye, antivirus. So I'm just going to make a new folder on my desktop. I'm just going to call it Atlas Install. Oh, my antivirus has deleted the playbook. Right, let me download that again. Yeah, so if you get any pop-up like that, don't worry about it. Turn off your antivirus and you should be good. Atlas underscore install. Make sure it's all one word. So yeah, we've got that. And then we just basically just extract what's in these zip files into the folder, basically. Nice and simple. There we go. So now we should have a file on our desktop with these three files in it. So what you need to do now is you need to download the media creation tool directly from Microsoft. So this isn't actually an ISO that we've downloaded from Atlas here. What we need to do is we need to download our own ISO and then use these files which will modify that ISO to make the new Atlas OS. It's a little bit confusing, but I can understand why they've done it. So if we go ahead and go into Google here and just type in media creation tool and then just go to the first link here, make sure it's Windows 10 22 h2 and make sure it's the feature update as well but yeah we're going to go and download the tool here and just open that up and we're basically going to download our iso through this program basically so i'm sure you guys have used this before if you've ever had to reinstall windows or make a usb for another computer it's pretty straightforward there are easier ways to get isos directly from microsoft using uup dump but we're just going to use this method so we're going to go ahead and select create install media and yeah, make sure it's Windows 10, it's 64 bit. You can also select your language here as well. And we're going to select ISO file. And yeah, we're just going to download it to our desktop. So yeah, now sit back, relax. And depending on your internet speeds, this might take a while to download. All right, so we're back. It has finished downloading and it is saved to my desktop. So we can quit out of the media creation tool now. And we should have the Windows ISO. So I'm going to go ahead and drag that into my Atlas install folder. And next up, we need to grab ourselves our trusty USB and plug it into our computer. Now, as I always say, make sure you back up all the data that was on your USB because it's going to be completely erased to make the Atlas OS installer. So we need to open up our trusty Rufus here. Go ahead and open that up. Make sure you have your USB selected here then we just select the windows iso that we just downloaded so that should be in my atlas install folder and yeah pretty much just leave all these settings on default have a gpt and mbr obviously depends on what system you're going to be installing on i know mine's a gpt so we're gonna <laughs> chat gpt so we're going to um yeah select that and it's obviously uafi however if you're a legacy system then mbr will be for you so yeah make sure that's all like that otherwise you can pretty much leave these settings on the standard pretty much everything and then just press start and then yeah it'll come up with this box here we're just going to tick all three of these boxes so yeah it's going to create a local account with my name set the regional options like my time zone and that kind of thing and also skip the data collection privacy questions which is very good that it does so just press ok and yeah obviously it'll give you a warning saying all your data is going to be erased just press ok and yeah it'll just make the usb all right so our usb has just finished making in rufus but don't do anything just yet if you just go into this pc open up the usb you'll see all of the files that are on the usb in order to make this a bootable windows drive but what we need to do is we need to drag all the files from atlas install onto the usb obviously make sure not to drag the iso onto the usb so yeah these three files right here that i've highlighted 
drag them onto the USB into the root directory. And the next thing we need to do is disconnect the internet from the computer that you're going to install it onto. So I'm going to install it onto my low end PC. So I need to get under the desk and unplug my ethernet cable. One sec. All right, so now that I've done both of those things, we can unplug the USB from my computer and we're going to plug it into the PC I'm installing Atlas OS on. All right, so I've just turned on my PC and I've pressed the boot key, which in my case is F8. And we've got this menu here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down to UEFI SanDisk, which is my USB, and we're going to boot off it. So yeah, it's pretty much just a standard Windows 10 install. So just go ahead and install everything. That didn't make any sense. So yeah, it's just a pretty standard Windows 10 install here. I'm going to go if I don't have a product key. Make sure to select Windows 10 Pro. I'm not sure if it will work with home. I'll have to put in the comments. But yeah, I'm going to select Windows 10 Pro because that's what's recommended. So yeah, just go ahead and select your drive. And yeah, it's just a standard Windows install after that. So I'll be back once Windows 10 is installed. All right, so my Windows has just finished installing. And as you can see here, it knows that I'm not connected to the internet. That's because I disconnected my Ethernet cable earlier. So we're just going to go ahead and pretend we don't have Internet, continue with limited setup, and it should just pretty much do everything for me because we select all those options in Rufus. It set up an account for me. It skipped all the data collection questions, and that's it. So there's no drivers or anything installed because we haven't connected to the Internet. And yeah, this is pretty much what you've got. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and disable Windows Defender just in case it causes any issues like it did earlier. And now we just need to open up our USB. And as you can see, see our files are still on here so I'm just gonna go ahead and make a new folder on my desktop I'm too lazy to change the name so yeah we'll just go ahead and we'll drag in the playbook we'll drag in the disabled drivers installation and AME wizard beta into the folder so this is all the stuff that we added to our USB it's now on our desktop so yeah we can unplug our USB now all right so the first thing we need to do is we need to run this reg key here so yeah just double click on that press yes press yes and then it's recommended you reset start after doing that all right so my computer's just restarted all right so the next thing we need to do is we need to open up ame wizard beta so just right click on that run as administrator press yes and this is basically going to transform our standard windows 10 install into atlas os so that's going to be pretty cool and then you just need to select the atlas os playbook so you can do that by just dragging and dropping this into here or you can also just click here find it in your folder select it and press open I've already done that and yeah here we go this is AME wizard so first thing we need to do is disable security so just go ahead and press run action and yeah we basically just need to disable our antivirus stuff so just open windows security turn this all off and that should be that so as you can see here windows security is disabled so we can now close this window and then just press next on this little wizard here and it says here system requirements not met so we need to go ahead and run the action here this is just preparing the system here okay it's just done that and now it's it's going to restart our computer for us okay we're back if you get this just press yes and we should open up ame again so yeah just go ahead and press next it should analyze again and we now need to connect to the internet so yeah i need to go onto my desk again and plug in my ethernet cable so yeah now we can just check again it should see we now have an internet connection press next and all of this stuff and yeah sit back relax and watch Atlas OS be created in front of your very eyes. So yeah, this is probably going to take a while, so I'll be back once it's finished. Boom, here we are in Atlas OS. So yeah, that's pretty much everything all done now. I've just been sat here watching it do its thing. Our Windows 10 install has been fully transformed into this. So yeah, we shouldn't need AME Wizard anymore, so we can just exit out of that. So yeah, we've got a really nice clean desktop wallpaper here. I really like their logo. It's really nice and minimal. And yeah, this is pretty much it. So if we just look at this folder here, try and drag it around. It looks like we have got animation, so that's pretty good. Now what I need to do now is I need to go ahead and install my graphics drivers. Since I've got an Nvidia graphics card, I'm going to use NV Clean Install, which is much more recommended than using Windows Update or even Nvidia GeForce Experience. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and grab that, but it looks like, okay, so we've got Internet Explorer that's come pre-installed here. Doesn't look like we've got Edge anywhere, which is good. Although I have been using Edge quite a lot recently, mainly because of Bing Chat, but I might be doing a video on that very soon. So yeah, let's go ahead and go to the old school Internet Explorer and see if we can get MV Clean install. Looks like they've changed Internet Explorer so that when you first open it up, it goes to their website. And obviously, yes, install Microsoft Edge. It's just bugging me to do that. Let's go ahead and get MV Clean install. 
So yeah, highly recommend installing this if you've got an Nvidia graphics card on a new system. If you've got an AMD graphics card, then go ahead and get your drivers from their website. And same with Intel as well. Might as well create a desktop shortcut as well. And yeah, this is basically where I'm gonna get all my drivers from. So yeah, I'm just gonna go for the best one. We'll get some of this stuff as well. But uh, yeah, we do not want GeForce Experience because that is bloatware. Though it's not as bad as uh, Razer or anything like that. So yeah, let's go ahead and install that. This should give us all of our stuff. My display will flash and I'll get all my drivers installed. And then yeah, we'll take a look at Atlas OS. Right, so here we are on Atlas OS. I've got it all set up. I've installed Firefox, all my drivers and everything. So yeah, like I said, we've got a nice clean desktop background here. We've got no system tray. They seem to have disabled that. Although maybe if I get some more stuff, I can probably kind of hide it away. And then yeah, it's just a simple version of Windows 10 really. We've got our clock and calendar which I really wish they'd bring back in Windows 11, especially the timer with the seconds as well. It's so helpful, but yeah, little things. So yeah, we can right click on here. We can go to our task manager and yeah, let's see what processes we've got here. So if we go to, oh, I haven't used this in a while, but yeah, as you can see, we've got 51 processes. That is insane. Wow, I don't think I've ever seen an operating system with that low pros, 50 processes. Oh, this is incredible. Literally, this is probably the best operating system I think I've seen so far. So we've got no startup because we haven't really installed anything. If we go to processes here, 17 background processes. What? I mean, obviously, yeah, two are NVIDIA. You know, more drivers you install, you know, it might be different for you. We've only got 31 Windows processes, which are all just, you know, the essential stuff. But wow. Now, this has amazed me. Genuinely, this is better than Tiny11. This is probably better than Ghost Spectre as well. Wow, honestly, they've done something really good here at Atlas. Highly recommend checking this out if you're on a really low-end PC. This is incredible. We've got hardly any RAM usage as well. 1.4 out of 7.9 gig. Yeah, honestly, this feels really snappy. They haven't really like disabled any animations or anything like that. Just lots of background stuff's been cut out. But yeah, it all just kind of feels pretty instant, really. I click on something, it's open. We've got pretty much hardly any disk usage here on our C drive, as you can see here. Our Explorer looks really clean as well. There's hardly anything going on. All things have been unpinned. In terms of bloatware and pre-installed stuff, we've just got the standard Windows stuff, Windows system, PowerShell, so yeah, pretty much all the essentials you really need really are all here. We've also got stuff like Xbox and Xbox Game Bar, which is good if you're going to be doing gaming. You're probably going to want this installed. And yeah, it's good we've got PowerShell and stuff like that. Interestingly, calculators come pre-installed. I'm not sure if they've got the classic calculator in Windows Tools. So it looks like they haven't got the old calculator in Windows Accessories, so they've had to include the standard Windows 10 one. But yeah, it does the job. I don't think this is causing too much bloatware here. We've got search as well here, which I'm not sure if it connects to the internet and uses Bing. Just search my name real quick. Oh, okay, so this is just a local search then it looks like. So yeah, very useful if you need to find something real quick. Doesn't connect to Bing, doesn't fob you off with like the latest news and all the stuff that you don't wanna see here. It's just a nice simple search box, which honestly is how it should be to be honest. So there's not really that much to say really. I think this is a really good operating system if you're on a low-end PC or even just a high-end PC and you, and you just want to get lower latency and better game performance. But yeah, honestly, I can't get over the amount of background processes. That is just incredible. Really, really good. So yeah, we're going to go ahead and install Minecraft and just do a bit of gaming on here. I'm sure it'll perform absolutely fine. But yeah, that's what I do on my channel. So here we are running Minecraft 1.19 on Atlas OS. And yeah, it performs really well, honestly. I mean, I've got my NVIDIA graphics card in here. So the FPS is obviously going to be good. But it looks like we're only getting 50. Okay, there we go. It kicked into life there. We're getting about 200 or so FPS. Kind of fluctuating a little bit, probably because of the world that we're in. But yeah, once we're all loaded in, it feels a lot smoother. And yeah, honestly, if we look at the task manager here, probably still isn't much going on. This is a really minimal install. We've got 72 processes, so it's gone up slightly. We've obviously got Minecraft and all that other kind of stuff running here, gaming services as well. Another important point is it does come with Microsoft Store installed, so you can get the new Minecraft launcher, and you can also get Minecraft Bedrock Edition on here as well, so that's good that that all comes installed, and you don't need to jump through any hoops to install that. So yeah, honestly, I'm pretty impressed with Atlas OS. They've done a really good job here. I would say once they've got their Windows 11 version up and running, I'm 
probably going to switch to my main PC, honestly. Although my PC is good, it is very annoying with all the bloatware and all the stuff that comes pre-installed and it always just keeps coming back. It's really annoying. So if you want to see a video of me switching to Atlas OS Windows 11 on my main PC, then leave a like on this video and let me know in the comments down below. So it is pretty annoying to install Atlas OS. You do have to do quite a lot in order for it to work. So yeah, would I recommend it? I mean, if you follow my video carefully and make sure you watch everything that I do, then you should be pretty good. I mean, it's pretty much just a standard Windows install and then you just got to run a couple of post install stuff. I can see why they've done it because you can get into some legal problems distributing Windows ISOs. So yeah, that is quite annoying. So if I ever do do my own Notra OS, it's probably going to be installed just like that. Yeah, we're doing some 1.19 PVP because uh, I can't really be bothered to switch to 1.8.9. It's so derpy, 1.9 PVP, isn't it? You've got to wait for your sword to power up. There's no such thing as jitter clicking anymore. It's all about strategic strafing and placing your crosshair and waiting for your sword to power up. It's, oh, ah, oh, he beat me. My sensitivity is just not on. Right, so I've messed around my sensitivity now. Come on, man. Can we get a 1.19 combo? Come on. No. I hardly have any room on my mouse pad to do any kind of strafing. Oh, as an OG player, this just hurts. If anyone out there can teach me how to do latest version PvP, that'd be greatly appreciated. But right now, I honestly don't care to get good enough at it. As a legacy player, this hurts. It really does. But yeah, anyway, we're not talking about combat. We're talking about Atlas OS. And yeah, it is a good operating system. I'd highly recommend checking it out. The performance is just insane on it. It's a little bit annoying that it's only Windows 10 right now, but a lot of people out there still use Windows 10. So yeah, if you want to go ahead and check this out, definitely make sure to check it out. I'll leave a link to it in the description. And yeah, I'm not sure whether I'm going to switch to it yet. I might wait for the Windows 11 version to come out, which I've asked and they said it's in production and it might take about three months. So if you guys want to see a video on that when that comes out, then definitely let me know. And I'll probably end up switching to it on my main PC, honestly. So yeah, thank you guys.